Hello everyone, this is Bentley out in Kent, Washington, and I wanted to give you a couple updates on some tanks and a quick tour of my primary fish room. Uh, so here we are walking into the room from my front door, basically, uh, and you can see my 90-gallon fry tank, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, beside a couple of arcade machines I own. I'm, I'm a big gamer, so I naturally had to have some arcades. Uh, and then we'll turn back toward the entrance there. This is the 29-gallon rehome project that I did a video on uh, last week, uh, and you can just see as we get closer, the the Harlequins and the Neon Tetras schooling around, and the the half black guppies that are in there doing their thing. Um, tank's been doing great. I, I've absolutely fallen in love with that tank. We pan over a little bit here to the right. Uh, these are two 10 gallons on a rack system along with my CO2. Uh, we'll talk about those in a sec, and it's just a little white and blue LED aqua top there. And then finally, of course, the Rainbow Fish Tank, which is my, my primary display tank. Uh, and we'll give some a little interesting update on this tank in a sec, too, uh, as we kind of zoom out. And then then to the right of this was my chair that I often pass out in while watching my fish because it's so peaceful. So we'll go back to the 90-gallon. We'll start there. You heard me right when I said it earlier. 90-gallon fry tank. And I've spoken about this a little bit before, but here it is kind of zoomed out. And in a second, we'll zoom in. Um, and you can see I got a piece of water spread. I need to replant. But this is all currently full of Bosemane Rainbow Fry. Uh, and you can see sort of how many are in there. And so we zoom in, and then you'll really see how many are in this thing. So here we are zoomed in. And just look how much activity is swimming around in just this part. And you can see off to the... This, this is the right-hand side of the tank where it's um, stiller. There's less water flow. And then on the left, there's where my hang on back is, uh, which is a, an Aqua Clear 70, plus the sponge in back here, and then a lot of plants to filter this thing. Uh, so there's a side that has flow, and there's a side that's a little more still. So there's both rest and flow areas. But you can kind of see just how many fish are in this tank. <laughs> um, and because they're rainbow fish, you know, they take a year, two years, really, to grow up and start seeing proper coloring in them. Um, and I mean, it can be done faster. Uh, this is kind of my first go at it. So I wanted to give them something better than just a, like a 20 gallon tall or something jammed full. And there's, there's something like 50 to 70 fry out here in this thing. It's really hard to count. Um, but I mean, you can just see zoomed out here. There's a ton of babies and there's a few of my blue Moscow guppies left in here that I wasn't able to catch, uh, or, or got frustrated and gave up for a little while. Um, and we'll, we'll do an update on the, those guys in a sec, but I figured, uh, I love spoiling my fish, so why not just let them live in this 90 until they're ready to, um, either be sold or, or, you know, given away to local, um, Seattle aquarists, mostly through, uh, the Greater Seattle Aquarium Society, which is GSAS, I'm a member. Um, and, you know, most, more than likely, these will go to some local fish stores and hobbyists. Um, and I might keep a few, depending on how they color up, and, and, and just keep um, breeding them from there, because I really love the Bosmane rainbows. Uh, and I just, it is amazing to sit here and watch the difference in size because of how rainbows grow up and their hatching process. And I'll probably do a separate video just on that here soon, just to kind of explain it and give you guys some ideas on what it is like to do rainbows. Now here we turn around and we go to the back side. Here's the rainbow tank. In this corner here, um, I use it as a grow out for some of my plants. So you'll see like a really random assortment. Uh, it has nothing to do with aquascaping. I'm by no means a master aquascaper. Uh, but as we go away from that, um, which is just a weird thing I do in my tank, you can see my big male and you see a big white stripe on his head. Well, he's about to show us some courting behavior. And I have a second of the shot. Here's a rehomed gold garami up kind of middle top now. We're going to focus in on him, uh, or her. You can see a lovely color. Uh, that came from a couple in their 70s that were moving and just didn't want to take care of their fish tank anymore. Um, so I took their, their little 16-gallon bow front off their hands and, and their fish. And that guy recently just got into this tank and has really colored up and is looking really great. Uh, and is getting along very well with everybody, which makes me very happy. So here we see the male Bosmana in one of my three females. And this is their courting behavior, kind of in honor of a uh, Bob Steen font who's recently had his uh, Lake Atinjo Bozmanai spawn. 
I kind of just wanted to show in a mixed tank like this what courting behavior is going to look like and how much competition there can be trying to court and breed. Uh, which, you know, I, I, my goal is not to use this as a breeding project, let's be fair. But you can see the male showing that big stripe. And it's like, my camera does not do it justice. It is snow white on his forehead. And his front coloring in his blue goes from being kind of a dark blue to like almost purple and black. It's so deep and so dark. It's really gorgeous to look at, especially in like the cheek area. Uh, and you'll see he kind of constantly will bully some of the other males that he sees as competition, typically one of the Australians who's kind of aggressive. Um... In, in trying to interfere, that is not like actually aggressive. And then he'll he'll shimmy and shake and flare his fins like he's doing right there. And he, very often you'll see him go nose down and show his whole forehead in that stripe to the female, uh, just kind of showing off all his color. And his color is kind of constantly shifting and changing little green tones. The oranges get more vibrant and flex in. It's just crazy to watch in person. And as she kind of runs away he'll follow her after her and keep doing his thing and coax her back toward what he's deemed to be the spawning ground because it's the male's job in rainbow fish to to court and coax the females uh and you'll just see he's kind of constantly flaring his fins shimmying and shaking his body doing doing little laps around her um it's it's really kind of a, a cool dance to watch and in the second here you're gonna see um He'll finally kind of get her set up and she'll kind of accept and they'll go cheek to cheek and start kind of jostling and shaking uh, together. And that's that's breeding behavior when they're about to spawn, uh, which is coming up in just a sec here. You'll see him kind of bullying some of the other males off, trying to to set it up. And uh, here you can see he's just he's constantly kind of going head down, shaking and flaring his fins. You see right here, they get together right like this. They start, they start, and then the Australian butts in and ruins everything. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to give you guys, maybe you've never seen rainbow courting behavior, and this is what it looks like. And it's really cool to watch, especially how much the colors change. So from here, we'll go over and we'll look at the blue Moscow guppy fry. Now I moved them to what used to be some of the rainbow fry tank when I thought I only had about uh, 15 or so. Um, and... These are about a month, month and a half old, so you're really not seeing very much color yet. They look kind of bland and boring. And also, my camera just doesn't catch it very well. There's this one hiding in this uh, Java moss that I'm trying to get to come back from the near dead uh, that actually is starting to show some color in the back fin, some blue. But um, I had a lot of losses when I first got them and had them in the 90. So uh, I worked with the seller that I bought them from. He supplied me with a few extras um, in order to try and get this colony going, and then once we get to, like, full adult size, and I start seeing pregnant females, they'll be moved to a little bit larger tank for a more permanent colony instead of this little 10. But for right now, I wanted something simple that was stable, that I had already set up and running in order to get them going. And then beside that is a project I'm working on, we'll cut over to that in a sec here. Um, this little 10, just starting to get going, uh, going through its cycling, and getting its parameters stable for another project that we'll talk about in the future. So look forward to seeing some stuff on this tank. And uh, then finally, I want to do a big update on my Crevensis. So here they are, and you'll notice they're in my quarantine tank. Um, look how dark the male and female are here. Okay, I just want you to keep that in mind. See how dark she is. See the, like the pink tones in his rear fin there and that golden underbelly, real dark brassy top. And we'll have another shot where you see him without that color, much lighter tone. Like here they are now, and he's way more kind of a, a light yellow with the, the kind of black cross hatching that's very fine in his body. And she's significantly lighter with more purple and kind of translucent blue tones in her body as they kind of zip around the tank. So why is she that color, <laughs> right? Those are breeding colors, and we're going to cut back to them doing that. Uh, and you can see just how even dark he is right there and how dark she is. I was trying really hard in this shot. They were actually doing their breeding dance, which is uh, instigated by the female. It's the female's job for Cabrensis to initiate breeding. And then they have this cool like shimmy and shake dance. Uh, it's really cool to watch. 
and you can start seeing this little stripe on her back starting to form a little gold. Uh, the second she realized I was trying to, to watch her and record it, she stopped. But you still see how dark she is and how dark he is. And that like pinkish tone in his rear fin, his rear lower fin there. Uh, and that real golden color in his lower abdomen. Uh, and finally, like, you know, the reason why they were in here, I had a massive algae bloom in their tank. Uh, and she was clamping her fin. She was super, super unhappy. So we kind of emergency brought her into the tank that was part of the rehome project. Um, and we did some extra meds just to make sure. And then now they're back in their house now, along with, they got along with everybody that got rehomed except the Garami. So they're just in there. Um, and you'll actually see, here's the male. And beforehand, if you saw her before she dove into the cave, she had this like gold stripe on her back. Well, that's full breeding color. So she darkens up her whole body, uh, her lower, like not pectoral fins, but lower fins uh, in front of the anal fin are purple. And then she'll get this gold stripe on her back and that's full breeding colors. And usually she only has that when she's trying to coax the male into whatever cave. And you can see all these like big sand dunes that she's dug up uh, trying to make spawning caves. And then you can see the, the rehomed fish that we have. It's a Serpe Tetra, Black Screw Tetra, one Zebra Danio. It's a half a Noah's Ark. And then uh, the, in the corner, you'll see an, an older Betta eventually. But um, I really just wanted to give an update on the Kremensis, let you see some of her colors. And one cool thing, you can see it right here. In real time, you can actually watch that stripe on her body that you would see on most normal Kremensis disappear. As she slowly goes out of all that breeding colors and goes back to normal, just a little bit of purple in the belly, a kind of translucent -y blue throughout the body. It's almost clear and just, it's all gone. It's really fun to watch her shift her colors. And here's old man Betta up here that they, they all get along with. Um, but it's, I just wanted to give an update on those cribs because they're so cool and they've been so fun for me to watch. Thank you very much for you guys tuning in. I hope you all have an awesome Labor Day weekend. Keep enjoying your fish.